بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله In today's uh, reminder, I just wanted to touch on um, an ayah that was recited yesterday at the beginning of Surah Yusuf. Surah Yusuf, as you all know, is a, um, it's a beautiful surah. It's a surah in which we learn the story of one of the great prophets, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. And the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam is a very interesting story. There are many, many lessons you can learn from the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Yes, the evil of envy and the consequences of envy. Um, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put those who are closest to him through different trials and tests. The whole life of Yusuf alayhi salam was a life of tribulation and trials and tests. Um, we also learn the uh, concept of tawakkul, of relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all different lessons you can learn from the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. But what I wanted to reflect on today was a... Uh, an ayah right at the beginning of Surah Yusuf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes how Yusuf alayhi salam, after seeing the dream, he approached his father. And what did he say to his father? He said, Ya abati inni ra'aytu ahad ashara kawkaba wa shamsa wal qamara ra'aytuhum li sajideen. He said that I saw in a dream the 11 stars and the sun and the moon prostrating to me. And you know, Maybe we just normally pass by this ayah and we carry on in the story. But one of our teachers, when he was reflecting on this part of the story, he said, it's very interesting that Yusuf salam, when something bothered him, when something yani, that he saw which was uh, confusing to him, where did he go? He went to his father. He went to his father and he said to his father, my beloved father, I've just witnessed this. And look, the, the story then goes on and the ta'wil of the, the dream is given. But this point here of going to his father shows us what? The strong bond between Yusuf salam and Ya'qub salam. That relationship that Ya'qub salam had with his son Yusuf salam. And this brings us on to the, the topic of what? Of parenting, the topic of um, raising children. You know, one of the greatest challenges we face in the West is raising the next generation, raising a generation of children who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are connected with this deen. This is one of the greatest challenges that we face because we are competing with many different influences. Your children, when they go to school, primary school, high school, college, etc., they are bombarded with different influences. Yes, whether it's the influence of social, social media, peer pressure, school, I mean, people losing their identity, losing their faith. There are so many challenges that our youth are going through today. And what keeps them grounded is for them to have a strong foundation in this deen. And for them to have a strong foundation with you as parents. Because the reality is, it's a duty and responsibility upon each and every one of us who's a parent to give tarbiyah to our children. Yes, this is a responsibility. We will all be asked, what tarbiyah did you give to your child? And like I said, if we're not giving the tarbiyah, they're getting tarbiyah from somewhere else. They will be getting tarbiyah from places that you don't want them to get tarbiyah from. I remember, and I've shared this once before, a, f a number of Ramadans ago, one of my aunties, she called me, she said, can you come and speak to my friend? She wants to speak to you. So I said, okay, we arranged the time. I went to her house. I sat down on the table next to the auntie and the auntie started to cry. So I said to her, I said, what's wrong? She said to me that I have a son, 30 years old, married a non-Muslim, uh, doesn't pray, doesn't go to Jum'ah, it's Ramadan now, doesn't fast. She said, I don't know what to do. 30 years old. And then she go, went on to explain any what happened. But she said one point that has always stuck with me. She said, I blame nobody but myself. And I said to her, why do you say that? She said, the reason I say that is because when my child was young, when my son was young, we never gave him any tarbiyah. We never were concerned with his tarbiyah, his Islam and his love of this deen. We never worried about that. Made sure he was fed, made sure he had clothes, made sure he had everything that he needed. But when it came to his Islam and his deen and that tarbiyah, we never gave it. And this is the result now. 
This is the result now in the Arabs, the, the, the poets they were saying, Man ala shay, ali. Whoever grows up on something grows old on that same thing. More often than not, and what you set in the, in the early years is what they will grow up upon. And if you neglect the early years, then don't be surprised if when they get to their teens, they rebel and they're not connected to the deen and they're not connected to you as parents. So this responsibility, as I said, is something we can't shake off. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Kullukum ra'in, wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati. That every single one of you is a shepherd. And every single one of you is responsible for their flock. The husband is responsible for the family. The mother, yes, the wife is responsible for what? The household. This is a responsibility. The mother is of course the first madrasa. Before the imam, before the masjid, before the Islamic school. Who is the one who is responsible to give tarbiyah to the child? It's the parents. And more often than not, of course, that responsibility falls on the mother. It's the mother who's, who's at home. It's the mother who's going to give that tarbiyah on a daily basis. So this is something we have to really reflect on, my dear brothers and sisters, because we are seeing a generation growing up now who we will lose if we do not uh, keep them grounded and connected with this faith. And the scholars, they give a number of um, points when it comes to raising children. And one of my teachers, he, he shared a, a few that I'm going to mention now. He said the first thing when it comes to your children. Now, of course, it's, very, it's a lot easier when they're younger. When they're in primary school, you know, they'll listen to what you say. If you set the, the boundaries and you set the guidelines and you show the way, then they will follow. When they get to high school, it gets difficult. Yes, I know, I've got a daughter in high school now. SubhanAllah, the challenges are, are, are different. Um, but what... Yeah, and he helps is when if you have that strong bond with them, that connection with them. But my teacher, he said the first thing that each and every parent needs to do is make sure they're making dua for their child. Yes, and reflect on that. Ask yourself, when was the last time I sincerely asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides my children, that he protects my children from fitna, that he keeps them strong on this faith, that he makes them those who love Allah. These are du'as that we should be making. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who protects. We all believe that. If that's the case, then why aren't we making du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, again, my teacher, he said that if you had a child who was sick, you would be up at night making du'a for that child. You would be praying to hajjid for that child. But if that same child is not connected with Allah, is not praying their salah, why is that same concern not there? They might not be physically ill, but they're spiritually they are ill. So it requires us to go back to Allah and call upon Allah. The second point that was mentioned was to ensure that your children are surrounded by good company. Yes, ensure that your children are surrounded by good company, good influences. Yes, those who have a similar mindset to yourself when it comes to outlook on life and what it is you want for your children. Yes, and ensure that those children are the children that your, child, that your children spend time with. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, He said that a person is on the path of their friend, is on the deen of their friend. Look at who you take as a friend. We can relate to that ourselves. Ask yourself the question, yes, when you're with certain boys or when you're with certain friends that maybe aren't connected with Allah, maybe aren't practicing Islam, maybe aren't praying, and you're with that crowd and they are backbiting, and they do X, Y, and Z, what do you end up doing? You end up following, you end up falling into the same that they're falling into. But when you're with a group of friends who are what? Conscious of what they're saying, who don't fall into these sins, who make sure when the salah, the salah time comes, they pray the salah, what are you going to do? You're with them, so you're going to also be affected. Yeah, and this is why the Arabs, they say, قُلْ لِي مَنْ صَاحِبُكَ قُلْ لَكَ مَنْ أَنْتَ Tell me who your friend is and I will tell you who you are. Yeah, show me your friend and I will tell you who you are. Because more often than not, we're on the, the way and the path of our friend. So when it comes to your children, again, the earlier you do it, the easier it is. If you surround them with uh, children who have the similar uh, outlook, who are connected with Allah, who have been given this good tarbiyah, then this will influence your children. That's who they're going to spend time with. More, more time than yourself, they'll be spending with your, uh, the, their friends at school. So ensure that they are surrounded by good friends. Thirdly, and lastly, is to make sure you're setting the example. We all know that, look, children are like sponges. They will um, take what you do more than what you say. Yes, what they see you doing is what they'll follow. So set the right example. Set the example. You know, how, how many times do we hear where parents are telling their children to pray and they themselves aren't praying? I remember one of our madrasa teachers said to me that I was teaching the children how to pray. This is a year one class, five years old. And one of the children, one of the boys, he said to the teacher that I've never seen my father pray. Five years old, sending your child to the madrasa. And at home, the child's never seen you pray. What example are we setting? 
This isn't the example that you need to be setting for the children. So set the right example. Be the role model. This, you, if you're connected with Quran and your child sees you reading Quran all the time, your, Quran, your child will begin to love the Quran. Yes, so this is, and these are the things that are in our, our hands. We have to make the effort, my dear brothers and sisters. And of course, you know, keeping your children close by, making sure you spend time with them. And one of the biggest disasters we have in, in the modern age is what? Is these mobile phones. This is the biggest disaster. Why? Because you have a family sitting around a dinner table, the parents are on the phone, the children are playing on the iPad, nobody's talking, everybody's disconnected, and, and it, we're, we're, we're living life like this. And the more that time passes by, the more disconnected we're becoming. Why? Because as parents, forget the children, how many of us are addicted to the phone? You might be sitting with your child, your child speaking to you and you're busy on the phone, giving them no attention, no time. Yeah, so these things need to be controlled. Why? Because if they're not, they will destroy the next generation. And what honestly shocks me is when I see an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old with an iPhone. What's an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old doing with an iPhone? Honestly, would you give your, your child a knife? You wouldn't give your child a knife and say, walk around with this because that child, you know that child, and if he uses that knife against him, he's going to cause some serious damage. It's in the same way that it might not be physical damage, but this is spiritually going to kill your children. It's, I mean, how many times you just tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, just going through the videos, 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 and the hours spent by, two hours spent by learning absolute filth, rubbish. So well, you have to be very careful. And even if they get to a certain age where you give them a phone, having those checks on there, um, being careful where they're spending their time. So, and, and actually spending quality time. When I look back at my own childhood and I end on this, one of um, the things I remember most fondly is the time that my father gave me. When he used to take us out bike riding, he used to take us hiking, and he, football in the park. All of that, that time that he gave is what kept that, that bond strong. And throughout my childhood, then I was always connected with my father. Why? Because of the time he invested. So keep your children close, do activities with them, spend time with them. Yes, that's be so, so then, like Yusuf salam, when they have an issue, they're going to go where? They're going to go to you. Why? Because you have that bond with them, you have that connection with them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our, our, our children. And the last thing I'll finish on, you know, I know, I keep saying the last thing, but, you know, sometimes we think that I'm doing all of these things, but my children are still, still going astray. And look, when you look at the Quran, you find that there are no ideal, this concept of an ideal family does not exist. Yes, it does not exist. Look at Adam alayhi salam. And he, his son kills the brother. This is the family of a prophet. Look at Nuh alayhi salam. Allah says, Innahu laysa min ahlik, that your son is not from your family. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salam, he's being asked to sacrifice and slaughter his own son. Yusuf alayhi salam, his brothers throw him into the well. Maryam alayhi salam is a, by today's any perception is a single mother. And she doesn't have a husband to raise her child with. And these are situations that these Anbiya went through. To show us what, that there's no ideal family. This concept of an ideal family, there are struggles. It's not going to be easy. Yes, this is a challenge, but it requires us to what to step forward. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He protects our children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He guides them and He keeps them on the straight path. Wa akhru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.